Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to try to show you how to calculate area under a curve for a calculus project. So let's open up Python. I'm using 2.5.4. Um, you can do this program, I think, in almost any Python. It doesn't have a lot of restrictions, any Python uh, um, version. Let's go file new window. I'm going to do a file save and immediately save this. Do a file save and immediately save this. I'm going to call this just calc area and make sure you put a dot pi dot py so that you get all the color and everything that you want um, and be able to use it as a python code so let's put a quick little comment on top we're going to do an integral integral approximation with left end and right end and trap I may even do midpoint, but let's just do left end, right end, and trap. I forgot to put the right in there. So that's the basics of what we're doing. Um, and if you're in calculus course or the towards the end of calculus, first year calculus, this should make sense. We need to import some things. We're going to import first. Um, I always like to import the system just to be safe. Some of the things I use it, uh, in here will be from the system. And we're going to be using Pygame down the road, but right now I don't need it, so I'm not going to start it yet. Let's just simply define a new function. DEF for define a new function. So let's define the setup. I'm just going to call it setup. And basically what we're doing is we're just asking the questions of what's the equation and, and how much of uh, an integral do you want, for, in other words, from A to B, so from one x-coordinate to another x-coordinate. When you make a definition, a function, you need to use the parentheses, and don't forget to put a colon in, and it'll indent automatically. Um, I might have to global some variables, so I don't have to keep passing them through. It depends. Let's just see if I can piece this together here. First thing I want to do is I need an equation inputted. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the variable eq. EQ be our equation. And the way we're going to input this is we just want to use the raw input command. This will work off a shell. It won't be with Pygame. It'll work right off a shell, basically. So we're going to do raw underscore input, input, parentheses. It should be turning a color. I think depending on what version, I'm not sure the colors are always consistent. And let's put a quick question in. Provide an equation. You can type anything you want in here when it's in green text or Quoted text, it's, it's whatever question you want. So word it any way you want. I'm going to say provide an equation. Okay, in terms of X and use Python notation so that I don't have to worry about our Python syntax. Syntax notation, another way to say it. Okay, um, and then close quote. I usually put a space so that there's not the number I put in or the equation I put in. It's not so tight against the question. Close quote. Close the parentheses, hit return. We may be doing a second equation down the road, but for now we just need one equation to get the area between the x-axis and the curve. So let's take the next lines. We need to know more input here. We need to know the left end. Uh, for lack of a better word, I'm just going to call it the left end here. So we're going to have the left end point, or what we usually use is A. So we're going to say raw end point raw, excuse me, underscore, input, raw input, quote, <clears throat> provide, or excuse me, enter, enter, um, usually it's A in most uh, calculus books, so I like to emphasize the letter A to help students understand that, so enter A or the left input, the left end, the left end point. I think I'm saying that correctly. Sounds good. Leave a little space. Close quote. Close parenthesis. Hit return. We're at the same idea. We need a write in. I'm going to call it the variable write in. It's a raw underscore input. Parentheses. Quote. And same idea. Enter B. It's usually in most textbooks from A to B. Or the write in point. Space. Extra space. Close quote. Close parenthesis. Hit return. We need to know, in most situations, if you're doing a calculus area under a curve, a numerical, um, a numerical estimation is using rectangles, a certain amount of rectangles. Let's call the variable that's saying how many rectangles to be n. So we'll say n equals the raw input, 
Raw input, just in case you don't realize this, is just going to ask a question on the shell and wait for your answer and the return. So in case you've never used raw input, that's how it'll look. So we're going to say enter the number of rectangles or if we use trapezoids, okay, or trap, trapezoid, trap, uh, trapezoids, there we go, trapezoids, might be ozoids, I might be spelling it wrong, I feel like I'm spelling it, trapezoids, oh boy, math teacher having trouble spelling in that new, close quote, put a question mark if you want, close quote, space, close parenthesis, etc., Make it look just like the other ones. All right, now we've got our input. Now we've got our input. We're going to have to be doing some calculating here, so I'm going to just give a little comment, telling uh, telling myself most of the comments I use are for me to look back on. So calculating the area. Okay, calculating the area uh, using the width, which is our delta x often, width of each rectangle. So what we need to do here is we need our delta x. We need our delta x. If you remember our calculus, or remember our calculus, our delta x, which I will just use the word delta x, delta x. I like the capital one, delta x. Okay. This is a calculation where we go from the, the distance between a and b and then each width of all the rectangles depends on how many rectangles. For instance, if the width was 10 and you had 10 rectangles, then clearly each one would be 1. If you had 100 rectangles, well, then you'd have to use a little calculation like this. Let's get the length between A and B. That is the right end minus the left end. The right end minus the left end. Okay, divided by divided by the number n. And what we need to do is we need to use n um, in a matter of floating so that we get decimals. So a basic word in programming world is called float. Float is um, as opposed to integer or int. The float command is basically going to turn it into a rational number, a number that can accept decimals. So we say float n, float n. On that same note, we actually forgot some code here. I need to put in a little bit of extra code here. When we ask for the raw input, we get text back when it in terms of what the computer sees. So even though for the left and right ends up here, we might have, go ahead and move your cursor up there. We're going to need to do something here. We might think we're putting in the value like, you know, 20, x equal 20 here. But the reality is that the computer just sees it as two symbols, two and zero, and doesn't realize it's a numerical value. So we have to do something where we have to take it and make it an integer of that text. And the way we do that is you say, yeah, I'm going to reassign it. This is called reassigning to the same variable. So left end is equal to the INT, the integer version of that text, the integer version of that text. So I say integer of left end. And that way, when I come down here and I use this word left in a little bit lower, it's not just some, you know, symbols that it doesn't recognize as a quantity. It now recognizes it as a quantity that can be added, subtracted, etc. Same thing with the right in. Same thing with the right in. So we got to go right in equal int. Okay, right in. All right. So let's see. We've got our delta x. We're going to probably start actually, you know, setting up for um, taking delta x and using it uh, to calculate the areas of each one. I'm going to do that in subroutines here in a second, but I always, I don't want to go too far with any program without making sure this works. So let's back this up. Let's um, get out of this um, function called setup, and let's do what we call the boilerplate version of calling up anything in Python. It's if, okay, if double underscore, double underline, that's always hard to one to remember, name, double underline again, double underscore, okay, double equal, because if statements need a double equal, it's a test, it's not assigning, it's asking, okay, and then we got to put a single quote, double underscore main, M-A-I-N, double underscore, quote again, single quote, then colon. 
So what this statement is, and if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I try to explain this each time, but just to make sure you understand what this is doing. Um, this is the, the way Python uh, calls up any commands and they run it as what they consider the main programs or the main functions. So just understand how the code works. Python will actually read all of this. When, when Python gets to a definition, it actually won't execute any of it. It puts it in memory. It stores all the information so that when you call out, hit return, type up, set up, parenthesis, parenthesis. So when you call out set up, it'll then go, oh yeah, I've got that in my memory. I'm going to do these things. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see if this works. Let's go run. Run module, hit OK, and it's asking a question in the shell. It's asking for the equation. It won't do anything because I don't have. It won't show me any results here after typing in an equation. So I'll just type something in here, like two times x, like a little linear equation here. Hit return. The next question does come up. Let it, pretend I am doing a calculation from zero to maybe ten. And how many trapezoids? I'll say 100 or 100 rectangles. And that's it. That's all we've told the code to do. Now, if I do type up delta x right here, okay, it won't, re it won't know that it has a delta x calculated because I didn't global it. So it's not in its like situation where it will be read outside of it. Well, let's, I'm going to stop right here for part one, and I'll continue on with part two. I'm David from Electric Teaching. Thank you for listening.